Did you ever wonder what 2020 means? What astigmatism is? What your doctor sees inside your eyes? Or what he looks for? These are a few of the things we'll talk about as we take you inside the eye exam. Actually, you don't get an eye exam. You get several eye exams. Your doctor will perform over a dozen different tests to find out how well you see and how healthy your eyes are. And depending upon what he already knows about you, you may get all of these tests or just most of them. It all starts with your history. Tell me more about your headaches. I get them every day. Naturally, your doctor needs to know about any visual problems. Huh? Is your vision cloudy? Or blurred? Mm-hmm. Especially when I'm reading fine print. He'll also ask about your family's medical history. Because eye problems can be hereditary. Any diabetes? No. He needs to know if you're taking any medications, since they can affect his tests, or if you're allergic to any medicines. Any reaction to drugs, such as penicillin? No. He needs to know about your occupation, sports, and hobbies, since these can affect your visual needs. If you're a new patient, your current prescription will be read from your glasses or contacts. The doctor uses this information to determine whether a new prescription is necessary. An accurate history is vital, because the doctor will consider this very carefully in making his diagnosis and prescription. Next, you get the famous e-chart test. In case you thought there was only one kind of eye chart, here are a few others, including one for astigmatism, one for children, and one for adults who can't read. They point which way the E is facing. The purpose of all these charts is to find out whether you have 20-20 or normal vision. Specifically, it means you can read this 20-20 line on the chart at a distance of 20 feet. A person with 2200 vision must be at 20 feet to barely make out the big E that a person with normal vision could read 200 feet away. Your doctor measures each eye separately, since they frequently vary. A person might see 20-20 with one eye and 20-40 or 20-400 with the other. The doctor also measures your vision with and without your glasses. Incidentally, never worry about making mistakes on any test. All parts of the exam are cross-checked at least twice. What you're seeing now is a routine inspection of the eye's exterior. The doctor studies the lids and lashes for growths, scars, or irritation. The sclera, or white of the eye, for redness, growths, or abnormal pigmentation. The tear ducts, for any swelling or obstructions. The conjunctiva, the seal that forms the inner side of your eyelids for signs of infection. He watches the way your eyes move together to see how well your eye muscles coordinate. This is the cornea, the prominent bulge of the eye that provides two-thirds of your focusing power. You're seeing it through a special microscope called a slit lamp. The doctor is looking for any roughness or ulcerations on its surface, any clouding of its clear transparency. He can also use the slit lamp to examine the iris, the colored part of the eye. While eyes appear many colors, there is really only brown pigment in the eye. Blue, gray, and green eyes are the result of a lack of pigment. You're looking inside the eye at what the doctor sees as he inspects the lens for spots or darkening that could be the beginnings of a cataract. If he saw one, it might look like this. He'll also examine the fluid in the eye, called the vitreous. Specks, called floaters, are almost always present. And while a nuisance for many people, they're almost always harmless.
This is the retina, as unique to everybody as their fingerprint. This incredibly complex organ, actually part of the brain, has over 100 million light receptors, each one sending a tiny bit of an image to the visual cortex. The doctor looks for any swelling or defect in the macula, the most sensitive part of the retina, which could reduce or distort vision, as shown on this grid. He'll inspect the optic nerve for depression or cupping, as shown here, which might indicate glaucoma. This is just one of several tests for glaucoma that the doctor does in a typical exam. Another is the tonometer, which measures pressure in the eye. The doctor also searches the retina for clues about your general health. Retinal bleeding could indicate diabetes. Swelling of the retinal arteries could indicate high blood pressure. Possible brain tumors, multiple sclerosis, and bacterial infections can also be detected in the eye. If he suspects a loss of vision, your doctor may do a visual fields test. This instrument actually maps out where your eye sees and where it doesn't. Patterns of missing vision can help your doctor catch several problems. This outer space looking piece of equipment is called a phoropter. It tests your focusing power and measures the degree to which you may be nearsighted, farsighted, presbyopic, or astigmatic. Being nearsighted means that without your glasses, you can see things up close more clearly than at a distance. Being farsighted is the reverse. Presbyopia means your eyes have lost their ability to change focus due to aging. When you're young, you can focus up close quite easily. As you get older, you have to hold things farther away to see clearly. Astigmatism means the eye has lost its ability to focus evenly. Notice the one and the seven are relatively clear, and the other numbers are blurred. None of these vision problems is a disease, and they can all be corrected with proper lenses. By using a retinoscope with the phoropter, the doctor experiments with various lenses until he arrives at a preliminary correction. He will refine this by asking the patient to select the combination of lenses that gives her the best vision. Does it look better here or here? There. For patients with astigmatism, he adds a cylinder-shaped lens to correct the vision. The doctor will also retest your eye muscles to see if both eyes move together and both look straight ahead. Tell me when the ball is on the line. Now. Muscles out of balance can cause headaches, eye strain, blurred vision, even double vision. This is an especially important test for children. Muscle problems, if not detected early, can cause loss of vision. Next, using all the information from the tests and history, the doctor arrives at your new prescription. If you decide to get contact lenses, further measurements will be made to determine the correct fit. And if the exam turns up other eye problems, of course the doctor will want to consult with you about those. Now there are a variety of ways to perform each of these tests, so the doctor may do them differently than we've shown you here. As you've seen, diagnosing and correcting vision problems is only part of the exam. Your eyes are also checked for early signs of disease. That's why it's important to have your eyes checked regularly, even for someone who doesn't need glasses. Surprising, isn't it? How much goes on inside the eye exam?